It's Open House Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Obejilu Ugbo. How are you? Hi, I'm amazing. Good to see you today. Good to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, I was at the um, Eco Inspire Me by Ara. Uh, you know, it was a stakeholders meeting with different people to discuss how to help um, the good boys and girls of Lagos, what we call Agbirus or area boys. And um, they had different panel uh, sessions discussing with some stakeholders. So I handled one of the, facilitated one of the panels and I had the RRS in my panel. I had um, a representative from the NDLEA. I had another life coach and therapist. Nice. And we had conversations on how we can best help these people. And it was, you know, amazing to know that the NDLEA has a lot that they are already doing it from counseling to trainings. And I was like, ah, ah. So we don't have all of this knowledge on how to help these young men. So it was, it was a very interesting session. When we finished speaking all the English, I now enter Pigeon. <laughs> because I was reading the room, and we had some of these good boys there, and mm. everybody was just looking like, OK, yeah, when you, you want to speak English, finish, where I go? <laughs> so I just knew I had to break into something. And you know, it was more welcoming. I could see smiles on their faces. They understood, and it was, it was, it was an interactive you able to get session. That. It was good. Uh, well done, Ara. That was Fantastic. a good one. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. I, well done. Doing all in the bell <laughs> I am well. It is how people have been getting in touch with me. Like, oh, we don't know your real name. Your oh, name is Olayemi. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so interesting to some people. Even me, I've not gotten used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but then. We, um, we, we love you as honeypot, but I, on our show, you know, like Okay, I hope that you'll not be going back and forth. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Look at you. All right, so yesterday when I um, left, um, I had a lot to do. And, uh, well, a pipe bust in my bathroom, it was a lot of work for me, water wow. everywhere. I had to, like, I, I was too tired. I don't know how I dragged myself out of bed today. Like, I had to start cleaning the mess and then get a plumber to fix everything and all that. So it was how my day went, yeah. I was just wondering, how did you, how, how, how the, your, um, your ear piercings, was it, was it painful? No, I actually love, I love piercings. It. I love it on you. I love it too, but I'm so afraid to. I'm so scared to do uh, it. All right, so me, I have, <laughs> I have high threshold, threshold for it's pain. Really, uh, so I don't know whether I've I got, I've to, got a lot of piercings actually. Really? Love In that. some other yeah. yes. crazy yes. places. Yes. Oh, and in fact, you're just kidding me. Yeah. Kidding me. I mean, I see just these. Uh -huh. I, mean, I tried to go get it. Was only the second one. Let me see if I can't see the They put back then. They put the inside here. Yeah, so that must be painful. Uh, no, I have here. Oh, my God. <laughs> they put the gun like this. It says a gun. <laughs> yeah. Back there, I don't know what they still use guns there, but they have yeah. a tiny little gun like this. Yeah. I go like this, I don't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed it up. That was my favorite. Oh, wow. I'll, do you I'll, know I'll, how many you have? Mm. <laughs> she will tell us later. <laughs> I learned, I learned it about you. I'm not knowing and learning about you. you need to know so that everybody you. will now know my no, body. You know now. <laughs> we don't want to know where it is. Okay, okay. So, so, so I, have, I have like... Mm, 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 mm. Hmm. Um, like nine or eight. Yeah. Wow. That's that's <laughs> yeah, where else could I put this in? This okay. Thursday anyway. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> but I love that. I love that. I love the fact that you're able to do it against our odds. And you see, I love to see Nigerians who are just... Than themselves. Uh, I so I it. think that a lot of Nigerians have not, um, because some people see me and sometimes maybe it is some Freudian sleep, you know, what is inside their mind, they just, it just escapes. So yeah. they feel like I'm a child of the devil <laughs> or something. And I'm like, no. So people, I would be friends with you even if you have tattoos from your yeah, brain to yeah, your feet. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. It is you. Content you of character. Say if you're good to me. Absolutely. If you tie your head, you don't wear earrings, and then you're not a good person, I can't survive Absolutely. it. So, yeah, that's so it's it. It's not about the piercings, yes. it's about the tattoos, it's <laughs> about the content of your character. I mean. That's how we must let Nigerians know that that's who you are. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. So how we will fund the 10.78 trillion naira budget deficit by minister. Fashola explains Lagos Ibadan Expressway delays. IPOB, federal government appeals, judgment freeing Kano. We kind of expected that would happen. Nigeria loses 9,000 doctors to UK, US, and Canada in two years. AK Speaker dies at 66. Reps Committee OK sale of Polaris Bank. President signs startup bill. And Buhari heads APC Presidential Campaign Council. OK, which story is starting with the nation? Two top stories. So, uh, Buhari, <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari. I just wanted to say Buhari like that. Mm. Signs uh, the Nigeria startup bill into law. And he's assured that the legal framework will protect youths and um, innovative sector against harassment and other abuses. So the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Ali Pantami, gave the assurance. And um, he was saying that um, this has been signed into Lord Startups Act 2022. That's Nigeria Startups Act 2022. And this is something that has been done for entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, uh, innovative entrepreneurs to ensure that they are properly protected as they start up their new businesses. And they're going to be earmarking about 10 billion startup funding for these startups. So it's uh, quite encouraging. They're going to handle issues of um, um, intellectual property, financing and regulation that really faces young mm. people when they start up their businesses. So the second story here is um, the committee, reps committee, okays divestment from Polaris Bank. So it's been um, a conversation they've been having to uh, sell Polaris Bank, but they had to be stalled because um, there was um, um, one of the uh, House of Reps member raised an alarm that they must investigate and ensure that everything is done transparently. So they have carried out the investigations and they've realized that nothing really is hiding in whatever they are doing so they can go ahead and sell Polaris Bank. All right, so I have a story. The Honorable Minister of Finance and Budget, the National Planning, Mrs. Zena Hamad has said yesterday concerning the budget. Now, many of you know already that the 2023 budget is about 20.51 trillion naira. That's not the news. And the fact that out of that 20.5 trillion, um, 9.73 is going to be internally um, total revenue that the, the, the budget will be funded by revenue internally. But the real problem is the 10.78 trillion naira deficit. Now, that one, they don't know where that money is coming from, but that money is not available. Mm -hmm. So she's now saying that the plan to fund that budget, that 10.7 trillion, through internal domestic loans. And what that means is that, according to them, they're going to borrow from domestic sources, 7.04 trillion, um, foreign sources, 1.7 trillion, multilateral <laughs> and bilateral loan withdrawals, about 1.7 trillion, and expected um, um, 206 billion from privatization of national assets. Now, this for me is, is, is worth discussing because when you say domestic borrowing, what does that you mean? mean? We need to now yeah. break it down. Mm -hmm. Are you borrowing from our from pensions? Within? Are you borrowing from mm -hmm. states, mm -hmm. governments? What exactly? That's so what it means. What are you doing? So <laughs> 10.7 trillion of your deficit is going to be um, costing from domestic loans. Right? And she also said that um, governments will continue to utilize appropriate debt management tools to streamline the cost and risk profile uh, in the debt portfolio. So it's all about managing our debt. Mm. And she still says that we're still within that uh, bracket to manage debt, that we're going to continue to, our, our, our debt pay profile is, is, is to steadily pay back loans and that, that hasn't given, our, given us a problem so far. Okay, okay. Let's, let's all right. So the one I have is um, sounding already like a broken record. Brain drain. Nigeria loses 9,000 doctors to UK, ah. US, Canada in two years. And uh, well, um, uh, the mass immigration of Nigeria trained healthcare professionals um, is so worrisome. The federal government and the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, uh, lamented yesterday. They lamented that the country ranks the next to India and Pakistan in number of foreign doctors supplying their trade in the United Kingdom. And according to them, uh, Nigeria lost over 9,000 medical doctors to the UK, Canada, and United States of America between 2016 and uh, 2018. And we were actually still talking about this this morning about, you know, the yeah. um, quagmire we are in at the moment uh, with uh, doctors leaving the country. So the Honorable Minister of um, Works, Honorable Fashola, uh, Minister Fashola actually was speaking yesterday at the inaugural um, conference we're having concerning reviewing 
20, um, uh, Buhari's administration from 2015 to date. And he was saying that, you know, he had promised us, and I know he promised us that mm -hmm. by December, mm -hmm. the Lagos Ibadan Express will be ready. Yes, yeah, so, But mm -hmm. now he, he has said, he's now saying that because Oyo State government is handling the drains and he doesn't want to have to um, complete the road and then come back to undo it again because of the drains. So they have to slow down because the Oyo State government has slowed down the work they're doing on the drainage. They also have to st slow down in the work oh, they're doing on the roads. Wow. And they have to obviously wait for them to finish the drains before they now complete. So he's asking that Nigerians should please bear with the yeah, Honorable Ministry of Works that is to be done. But he didn't give us a date anymore. You know that they were confident that yeah, they were December, December. December. Now he didn't say anything, but he has also I just said, hope that they are having conversations with uh, your states to, you know, to fast quickly track. Yes. yes. And and because people are really, really, really complaining. Uh, mm -hmm. But he has confirmed that the second Niger Bridge is already ready. I feel actually walking over it, just that the connecting bridges for Masaba is the one that they need to fix that before they can, people can have, if it, cars can have access to the Once it's worth the wait, if it's going to be fantastic, of course, hmm. if it's worth know, the wait, but then I'll time, that yeah, I get it. Punch, yeah. People are really groaning. Go, yeah, that, I, I Let's move on quickly to the punch. PDP crisis, aggrieved uh, National Working Committee members protest exclusion from presidential campaigns. Picture story here, Nema trains core members in disaster management. Alaba market traders' hoodlums clash, one feared killed. A kid speaker dies of cardiac arrest, government uh, mourns. And Lagos, about an expressway, nightmare persists, motorists demand alternative routes. <coughs> Telcos fume as FG orders tariff hike reversal. Flood, 4,885 Ogun houses submerged. FG absorbs Cameroon. FG records over 5 trillion hour deficit in eight months. And hashtag NSAS states fail to compensate victims. Police warns protesters. Okay. All right. I have one killed as RTEAN, Alaba International Market, you know, tax force clash over, um, you know, um, money. Yeah. So um, there is another leadership, market leadership in Alaba. And uh, according to them, uh, one was shot dead and, uh, you know, scores of others injured. Um, and that erupted between members of the Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria and those of Alaba International Markets. And because of the new leadership, they have said that they don't want these um, uh, people in their terrain again mm. uh, because they collect up to like 4,000 naira from each wow. driver uh, every day. But, um, you know, and that was the cause of it. And of course, uh, as they said, sadly, somebody has lost his life and um, a lot of people injured. Yeah, it was also said that they had to um, carry out the protest. They set up a bonfire. The traders were singing round, mm -hmm. in by in, that they are tired. They don't mm -hmm. mind starving. But they're, they're just they tired. Yet, they're yes, just they're tired. tired. Yeah. And, um, mm. Something has to be done okay. about it. Do we have time to take another? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, so the federal government has ordered telecommunication companies to reverse their recent 10% hike in calls and data prices. I mentioned it the other day here that I was trying to, you know, uh, buy data. Oh, yeah. And I realized that the money had increased. So they said they have called them to reverse it. Now, uh, the decision means that uh, MTN Nigeria and Airtel. Telcos like them, who have initially increased their prices of the, um, the data, data bundles by 10%, will now have to revert to the old price. Initially, they had gotten an approval to increase uh, the prices because they had been complaining that, as a matter of fact, with this uh, uh, Ukraine-Russia war, they had to start spending up to additional 40% on cost of operations and mm. everything had gone up so they just needed to find ways to you know increase their tariff and they were given that you know go ahead to do so only for the government to come back again and say oh yeah quickly reverse it so some of them are saying that this is not good yeah. for businesses yes, now that's you can't keep up. giving yes policies that are not that are very fluid today you say yes tomorrow you call it yeah. back and it would you know um disencourage yeah. um, other people to come in and invest in the country and something has to be done about this that they have quietly uh reversed it they didn't make noise about it, but it's not really nice. But government, on the other hand, is saying that your business people are doing is a bulk business. So even though we know that prices have gone up, you still have the uh, subscribers to yeah. be able to cushion the effects. And they're trying to make sure that Nigerians are not further suffering with this uh, increment. But I don't think that right. should be a problem. I understand from their own side. But the thing is that when things are very expensive and things have come down, then you should be able to bring the price okay. down. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. We are still reviewing Punch, and I have a story. So still connecting with the Lagos Department Expressway story in Punch, um, the director of Southwest Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, Adida Mola Kuti, promised that the inward and outward sections of the expressway will indeed be completed by December 2022. So he's, give, he's reassuring us that December is ready. However, people are complaining because the, re the reconstruction that is going on from Otedola Bridge to Bega and Isheri area have extended all the way to the Long Bridge. And this is a problem because it has caused a lot of gridlock. And people like motorists are obviously driving on one way or taking bikes, and it has caused a lot of congestion. And what they're saying is that there should be some kind of a alternative. detour, an alternative route yeah. for people to pass. You know, it you is. can't tell us to bear this till December. In especially these are travel, these are season. Period. And according period. to the report, they're saying that, yes, they already knew that that side would be very, very densely populated at this period. But they are asking us to please understand that they have to, they, there's really not much they can do at this point. But we're still appealing to the Ministry of Works and Housing that they should find a way to get the contractors to create some kind of a detour for people to, to have somewhere to pass so that the, the congestion can be reduced and we yes. can reduce the, 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 the um, problems and the distress on other people who are mm. applying that route. Moving on quickly now to Daily Sun. Let's find a story we've not taken. IPOB charges Southeast governors, Igbo leaders to speak for Kano's release. Military bars politicians from using its images. Um, 1.9 million Nigerians living with HIV, says United Nations. PVCs for voters registered between January and June 2022 ready for pickup. Lagos Alaba market shut as traders clash uh, with touts. Suspected herders kill two policemen and 16 others in Benue. And Naira will be devalued by 20% in 2023, says Bank of America. Okay, BC. Yeah, so indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, uh, are urging the Southeast governors and Igbo leaders to mm. immediately prevail on the federal government to release its leader, Namdi Kano, following the judgment of the Federal Court of Appeal in Abuja that discharged him of treason charges leveled by the government. Now, the spokesperson of the group, Ima Powerful, was asking governors, stakeholders in the region to take a bold step and begin to negotiate his release because he needs to be attended to, especially because of his health. And um, he says that he's noticed the sort of calmness and quietness that um, the Igbo leaders are displaying. They are not speaking up about him. The um, court has given uh, him his uh, freedom, and yet he's still in detention, and nobody's saying anything, that they should not be um, afraid that they will be victimized if they speak up, that they must not show that they are cowards. They have to speak up and get him out so that he can be attended to. And they are just observing everything that is happening. They are looking at all the Igbo leaders, looking at the politicians who are putting themselves first and not thinking of how they can help, you know, get um, Namdi Kano out. All right, so I have the, you know, soldiers video, uh, DHQ uh, warns politicians, uh, social media handlers against um, uh, fake news, oh. uh, something like what we talked about yesterday. Yeah. And, um, well, this is following a, a particular video that was making the rounds um, a while ago or recently where it showed that there were some soldiers who were uh, praising a particular uh, presidential aspirant and then, uh, you know, saying nonsense about the other person. Mm. And he was saying that, no, they shouldn't, they should desist from doing that. So uh, the defense headquarters yesterday warned politicians and their social media handlers to desist from misusing images and visuals of military personnel to campaign and promote their uh, interest. And according to them, this does not only present the armed forces in bad light, but can also sow seeds of distrust and instability. And uh, yeah. Okay, I was going to take the story. Uh, PVCs are ready. Nigerians, please that, that's open your good. ears. That's and good news. Hear me. Good news. Good news. <laughs> yeah, good news. <laughs> because yeah. they've been ready since. Actually, um, the administrative secretary of INEC, that's Awal Mohammed, was speaking at the uh, yesterday when he was speaking with the um, House of Assembly members, House of Representatives, and members of the uh, electionary campaign for all the political party was telling them that it's quite sad that we have so much energy to go and register. Now it's time for pickup. It has been slow across the country. He even said that there are PVCs in there. He mentioned, I think, Delta State. That's about 570 uh, um, cards unpicked. Uh, voter register. Who are, about, they've been registered for 13 months now, and yet they've not come to pick up. He also mentioned a few other states who there are there's some 300,000 just lying there. Others 69,000, so others 244,000 in various states lying fallow. You have not gone to pick up. So you went to register, you've not picked up. Please pick up your PVC mm. so that you can actually vote because voting is not on social media.
That's so right. Voting. It is what all, about actually direct, voting. Yeah, so direct, please start pick uh, up very between recently. January, the most recent January and June. Is, okay, if you register between January and June. It's ready. It's ready. Go and pick up. Yeah. Oshé. Oshé. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on quickly now to Vanguard. Floods account for one trillion naira ecological vote. FG task states. Wow, that's a huge story. I wish I read that. Mm. Abba Kiari NDLA applies to mask identities of lead witnesses. Police officer 22 others killed as armed headsmen attack police station in Benue. Second anniversary implements reports of judicial panels of inquiry, says hashtag NSAS organizers. Why we are no longer interested in Kogi land, says what? Judges' welfare of Zekome whips for judiciary, blasts federal government and, um, and others. One killed as RTEAN, -E Alaba International Market Task Force clash. And Fed FG's tackle deficit, debt with asset sales and other measures, says Finance Minister. Which story are we starting with? So the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, yesterday sought permission of the Federal High Court in Abuja to mask identities of lead witnesses billed to testify in the ongoing trial of the detained Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP, Abakiari, who is facing a drug trafficking charge. Uh, we know that he's answering to an eight-count charge. Uh, the NDLEA preferred against him for allegedly tampering with cocaine um, that was seized from two convicted drug peddlers, Chibuna Patrick Umebi and Emeka Alphonsus Ezewani. So they resumed the proceedings uh, yesterday, Wednesday, and uh, through the Director of Legal Services, Mr. Sunday Joseph, they have notified the court of their intention to present six major witnesses that will give evidence in the matter. However, they are asking that... Um, they had initially presented four witnesses, okay. you know, and they are asking that the identities of these witnesses be masked and shielded from the public, you know, so that they, are, they can, you know, better protect them. And um, there's something they wrote here, and I quote, my Lord, there are some people that are always here in this court to observe the proceeding. Some of them are police officers and some we don't know their identities. We need to protect the witnesses and that is why we are making this application. Mm. Uh, the council, that's um, Abia Kiari's council, also agreed, okay. just saying as long as they are allowed to see the witnesses mm. themselves, mm. that it's okay for them. So they have been asked to present the application to court and see. Okay, so I have the flood story. Um, the, I'm trying to see the person that was speaking here. They said the federal government has said that the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon is not responsible for the flooding we have experienced. That, according to the report, I was, it was Minister of Water and Resources Suleiman Adam that was saying this. He was saying that the dam releases water, yes, and, and um, the water without notice, they come without notice. However, it's not the main reason we have flood in this country. The main cause, however, is the rains have been unprecedented. <clears throat> and the tributaries of river Benue and the main, are the main cause. So the, the tributaries of the river Benue are the main cause of the flooding we see and experience. And more importantly, the federal government also said that one trillion naira was earmarked, has been given to states for ecological fund, mm -hmm. which is about 2.2% of the total budget, the 2018, 2019, and 2023 budget. They had 2.2% of it. Now, what are states using these funds for is something we need to really discuss and find out because every time they're asking you, what do you use your ecological funds for? Mm. Because you're supposed to protect and to manage disaster when mm. it does come. And obviously, when these disasters come, many of the states have nothing to do about it. And they're now mm. asking, seeking asking for relief. For relief from, 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 from federal government. So, um, I mean, I, I wish I read the article, but I didn't read the whole article. But the, the point is that one trillion was, was allocated to them, and we need to ask questions to government. Questions, yeah. and Where to the see money went? To. What did they do with this money, especially those states that, that are, that are um, flood prone? Yeah. Mm. Let's find out. Okay, proactive. let's move on quickly to the Nigerian yeah. Tribune. Uh, let's find a story we've not <laughs> taken. Do we have much time what do we time? have left? Okay, run out of time. Let's find a story we have not taken. Many injured as hoodlums clash with traders. We talked about that. Wild animals invade Edo community. Mm. Villages appeal to Oba or Benin. Constitutional review with wounds truncate alteration, says Conference of Speakers. Uh, Tinubu in fresh move to pacify agreed blocks as Campaign Council unveils fresh list. And FG not planning to restructure for the 2.8 trillion dollar debt. Okay, which story? The wild animals. Yeah, <laughs> so what happened? In, Edo State, not lion and... Uh, no, 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 it's buffalo and python. Okay. So they said there's a part of their village that has been, a part of the river, Dende or so, that has been uh, polluted by strangers 
who probably started doing a palm oil business in the water there and polluted it. Mm. And they had advised them against it. So now, uh, probably the spirit of the river is now releasing wow. wild animals into the city, pythons and uh, buffaloes, just like that. So they are appealing to the traditional... Uh, to do something to about do something it. something about it. Maybe do some rituals. I don't know. Interesting. Maybe traditional something. That, that's so so interesting. it happens. It still happens. Wow. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we're bringing our guests from I Create Club. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Today we are back with yet another product of the iCreate Club competition. Remember the club's focus is on nurturing creativity and over the past seven years, its activities have been consistently sponsored by Vitaform Nigeria PLC. Today's show and our guests will be sharing how exactly her creativity was put to work when Vitaform and iCreate Club challenged her with the business plan task. We have with us Gabriella. Hello, Gabriella. I'm fine, man. Good morning, ma. So, so tell us a bit about you. Thank you, Ma, for having me here. I am Gabriela Oladipo. I'm 11 years old. I'm in year six. The name of my school is Peaceville School, located at Redemption Camp. I came third in the iCreat Club business plan competition. All right. Okay, so Gabriela, let's get down to business. You really want to tell us uh, how did it start? I have Just tell us all about it. The name of my business idea is Petty Shop. I observe how my mom goes to work and comes back home very tired and exhausted. And even in a tired state, she goes to the market to purchase food for us to eat. When I saw the way my mom had to stress herself, I started thinking of a way to relieve her. That was when I remembered. I started thinking of a way to relieve her. Then something just popped up in my mind that pay to shop can actually help my mom and every other woman in her shoes to relieve the stress by going to the market for her. Mm. So I told her that I would love my business idea to be paid to shop, and she enlightened me of what it entails. And paid to shop simply means paying me to run around to the market because of your busy schedule. Hmm, mm. paid to shop, amazing. Yeah. So who are your potential customers going to be and where are you going to find them? My potential customers can even start from my mom. Being my customers, they're my neighbors, my church members, the busy business owners, the entrepreneurs, and not also forgetting the nursing mothers. And with the aid of adverts, my business can be expanded to everyone who is interested in my business, in my service. Mm. So obviously you have this all thought out. So there are other people, I mean, doing this business. How do you uh, propose to, what are your plans to be different? Thank you, Ma. I know there are thousands of people and agencies doing what I intend to do, but I will of course want my business to stand out in a unique way, thereby making sure my customers get the maximum satisfaction of the service I will offer. It is not going to be a case of what I ordered versus what I got, because I will be the one to do the shopping and the packaging of the goods. I will also ensure that the custom that the goods are being delivered at the right location and at the right time by the dispatch driver. All right, teacher, I'm sure that you're very proud of Gabriela, right? I'm super proud of her. <laughs> super proud, that's good. Yeah. I would really like to know, I mean, tell us, uh, what's the role did the school play in grooming Gabriela? Thank you very much for that question. First of all, before I answer your question, I would like to say a big thank you to Vitaform for this fantastic project. I would also like to thank the iCreate Club team for joining down to Redemption Camp where our school is located, mm. despite the traffic. I mean, it is highly commendable and it is a commitment on the right path. In Peaceville School, we nurture children, we care for children in the way of the Lord. And our anchor scripture is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 54, verses 13. We expose our beautiful children to various extracurricular activities mm. that make them think outside the box. We have our beautiful teachers, hardworking team, 
who make sure that the ideas of children are worked on and ends. It's no surprise that Gabriella here yeah, is already making us proud mm. and she's doing wonders. Her ideas are, is, is out of the world, thinking of nursing mothers, pregnant women, because really, that state is a stressful state. Yeah. As a pregnant woman, right. you're tired, yeah, you can't go to the market, right. you have a nursing child and you're trying, what time can I really go to the market to cook a meal? So these beautiful ideas of her, it's highly commendable and we are super proud of her as a school. That's Thank amazing. You. But Gabriela, how do you intend to get people aware of your business? After going through the video of the girl who won the first Icre Club business plan competition, I saw she used banners and flyers, so I immediately opted for that option. But I wasn't so satisfied. I wanted something that would make me to stand out. That was when I remembered that I can actually create an animation. And so I was able to create an anima and 45 second animation video talking about the talk explaining about the service I'll render to people. Great. Cool. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so tell us about the animations. How did you learn to make animations? My mom <coughs> taught me how to create an animation by guiding me on the steps to create it. Great. So all right, well, <laughs> before we go, um, a quick reminder that um, the 13 week um, uh, actually Vital for Memory giveaway is still on. For more information on this, visit the I Create Club's Instagram page, and that is at I Create Club NG. Let me, let, let's look at the uh, video. Um, I'd like to let our viewers see the video. Thanks for staying with us. So let me, go, one final question for the teachers. So I know Gabriella had mentioned that she got a lot of support from her mom on animation and all that. What advice do you have for parents to support their children in this kind of um, an adventure? I would love to encourage parents to be intentional in parenting. Okay. We should get involved in the affairs of our children. We shouldn't abandon the responsibilities of parenting to the teachers alone. In order to raise a teacher child, both the teachers and the parent must collaborate work together and make sure that a child is brought up in the way and in the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. By so doing, a total child is created. Mm -hmm. Thank Basically. you very much. So Gabriela, do you have any final words for I Create Club and Vitaform? No me without Vitaform, no me without I Create Club. I want you to use this medium to say thank you to, I, to Vitaform for sponsoring I Create Club. I also want to thank I Create Club for giving me the opportunity to participate in the iCreate Club business plan competition. Indeed, it has really helped me to discover my creative abilities. And I'll forever be grateful to God for seeing me through the competition. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Thank you. so that's all we can take. That's so trying to get some audio for us. We can see the clip, but, uh, but well done. I mean, this is impressive. Well done, Gabriel. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's a good, Thank you, good, um, good, to, good to see a young person like you. And, that's right. Uh, doing so much stuff. Well done. Yeah. That is all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we want our hot topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So um, in the past few days, one major topic has dominated the social media space, which is domestic violence. Due to the ugly incident that allegedly led to the gruesome death of Bimbo Ogbona, the wife of the socialite and auto merchant Ikechuku Ogbona, fondly regarded as IVD. 
many heartbreaking stories are beginning to unfold on social media space just because of this matter. Many families <laughs> and friends are saying, please help my, help my mom, help my aunts, help my family. I can't continue like this. I can't let my mother stay in this mm. kind of treatment. And it has, it, has, and it has endeared many people to this story. Now, the story of IVD and the late Bimbo is quite heartbreaking because reports have it that this is not the first time we're hearing of a domestic violence from that home, that it happened sometime in 2019, and um, there's been repeated issues of domestic violence, but somehow she's always gone back, which is, always, which is the very mm -hmm. familiar narrative we hear in these kind of situations where people always go back because they feel that they're, doing, they're going back for their children or for their financial security and other things. But today, we're, taking at it, we're looking at it from the other angle that now with this story, many people are coming out to say, please help my mother. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to get my mother out of this. I want to get my loved one out of this situation. What are your thoughts? Let's start with the IVD story. Uh, what, what, what's your thoughts on it? And um, what, give us a brief background of how the story is. For those who have no idea what the IVD story is about, let's Ponypot share the background with us. All right, so from what um, we have been seeing on social media, the stories that have been making the rounds, it was said that Bimbo, the late Bimbo, uh, got married to, or she started a relationship, she got into that relationship with IVD at um, age 18, and that um, at some point she was giving, or uh, she gave a school fees to IVD, that um, according to how they said it, that IVD uh, didn't have anything, but, you know, Bimbo's family was... Better. Better. So, you know, and that um, at, at the end of the day, she dropped out of school, and the parents were so concerned, like they would um, take her back home and they would want to detach her from the boy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, she was going back to, to him. And, um, well, she got pregnant. And they just had to, like, support them. They got married. In fact, according to stories online, that the mother had to forfeit, that is, Bimbo's mother had to forfeit her car, give it to them because they did not have anything. They were just starting and all that. Um, so it went on like that, and they said that they've, they, they've been having some, you know, a lot of back and forth. In, in fact, from some videos, you see that there is um, IVD2 is complaining about how he's been, uh, how he's been abused, uh, you know, uh, and then Bimbo2 is complaining. Bimbo left and then came back, and there are so many, uh, in fact, versions. In fact, some people are saying that uh, if uh, they are diabolical, uh, Bimbo started going to herbalist so that you know so that they can be rich and that sometimes she will enter the market looking mad and afterwards ivd will be you know tremendously you know rich like that and um you know it's been like that back and forth and they now said that this one that led the last straw that broke the camels back was that bimbo wanted to leave she already has five children she wanted to leave and she was scared because you know what does she take out of the marriage and that she wanted to take the the, the, um, the, house. The, the house and she had the papers and that's maybe somebody so, um, told IVD, IVD came down and uh, somehow she, she set um, uh, the house ablaze and she was like, okay, you know what, we're just going to, according to the news and that she dragged IVD into it, but somehow he got himself out yeah. and she, also, she got burnt yeah, and, uh, that, and she passed on Saturday, last uh, Saturday. Info. Saturday. Also a part of the story that um, talks about the fact that probably she's always been suicidal She's always been suicidal. She had tried several times to take her life. A uh, video came out showing her dancing. She had these um, bandages on. They said that's how she's been trying to take her life for as long as they remember her. And the viol violence has been between that she is more of the violent one. So she's dead right now. But the I think we should just take the lessons yeah, that's from right. the issue yeah. and so, discuss. So, so, the, so the issue that I mean, I want to also have a background so to have an idea of what happened. But the truth is that the real conversation is what you said. Mm. <laughs> When you're in a home where you are beating your husband or your husband is beating, beating you, how do you remove yourself? Some people always feel like, listen, you don't understand what we're going through. There's so many factors because it's almost like a no-brainer to say, leave. But when you are in the shoes of the person and they're having difficulty leaving, you kind of see things from a different way. That, that there, are, there are various factors. Okay. It could be the children, mm. the fact that my kids are too young. Or if I leave, where will my children stay? The, my, my, my husband could pay me bad. He said, well, she's the woman that left. So, so she left, she abandoned you. Mm. And then to your child, you look like the one that abandoned them. You know, there are many things women think about before leaving. And so the conversation, I don't want us to condemn somebody for not leaving, but I want us to understand their Why? own situation. Mm. And also <clears throat> the fact that 
when you have a spouse who is allegedly diabolical, they're asking you to do, how much sacrifice should you or should you be willing to make for a spouse out of love? That one is a fool. That's another show. Ah, yeah, yes, how yes. much? How much? Let's talk about sacrifice. this later. Yes, yes, start with the right. beating, they'll yes. come to the sacrificing yes. issue. So, I would even like to start with you know, you have mentioned, oh, um, you know, you're thinking about the children, you're thinking about this and all that. I think psychologically, people don't even understand that there is something called Stockholm Syndrome. And Stockholm Syndrome is when you are actually, um, you know, it's a coping mechanism, you're attached to your abuser. And it could be in different situations. It could be uh, uh, coach athletes. It could be relationship. It could be child abuse. It could be anything. So somehow you just develop that interest, that uh, love for your abuser, and you stay there. Summer bonding. So you're, you're the, so somehow it's looking to you like, oh, I, I can't even understand because I can't relate because I've never. But it happens that they're just there and they have developed, they have grown thick skin to it, and yeah, they have attached. developed the so love. See, for, yeah, but there are people, or there are people that tell us when they go for marriage counseling, that no matter all your issues, there's nothing that cannot be resolved. <laughs> There is nothing prayer cannot solve. <laughs> there is nothing you cannot you know. Mm. And no matter how bad it is, mm. there's somebody that has walked those shoes and I've been able. So a woman that has that mentality, she's like, okay, this is a problem, right? I can find a way to resolve it. I'll keep talking to him. I'll keep getting family members to talk to him, believing that one day he will change. Mm. So, so that's why we're trying to change the narrative yeah. now that you are not the Holy Spirit. You do not have what it takes to change any human being. Mm. And because most people get into marriage without knowing who they are, knowing themselves, having a form of self-love, anything they see in that marriage, they accept it as a cross. I'm not marrying a cross. I'm not Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. He carried the cross for me. I'm not going to carry another cross in the name of marriage or in the name mm. of a man or in the name of a relationship. It's supposed to be enjoyed. When it becomes a cross, I'm going to put it down. But do we all on have the wheel. that we carry at some point in not, our life? Not see, see, they are... I wouldn't call uh, disagreement crosses. Anything that impacts on your mental health is a cross. And you stay there. That's what I would call a cross. So if I have a disagreement with my husband today, we argue, we quarrel, we back each other two days, we said, those that, don't I have disagreements with you? Mm. I have with everybody. That's, that's a normal um, way of living where people would disagree. That's not a cross. A cross is that we have issues so bad that my mental health is affected, that we have issues so bad that I'm not able to stand around you. I walk on eggshells around you. I am hurt physically, mentally, socially, uh, financially. That's a cross. So if you find yourself in a situation, and I, I hear a lot of women say, hey, because of the children, if I live now, they will be raised in homes, uh, they will be raised in a broken home, blah, 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 blah. Your staying in that marriage is further hurting your children. Psychologically, they are seeing your way of life as the normal. Toxic. They will, toxic way of life as normal. Hold on, no. They will end up attracting people who will beat them to <laughs> because that's the normal that they know. But so it's even worse when you leave your child. How is it worse? Will listen, when you leave your child, I know somebody who till tomorrow has not forgiven her mother for leaving her. Nadine. No, the mother had to leave because of domestic violence. Yeah. But she, as a child, was left behind. She was left behind and she, she still holds that against her mother till tomorrow. Because the unforgiveness is on her to forgive. So whether she forgives her mother or not, the mother has done what was what best for the her mother at died? the time. Exactly. What, what if, if the passed? mother died in that relationship? So you go and deal with yourself that you have a problem of unforgiveness. It has nothing to do with a poor woman who decided to save her life first. So put yourself in that woman's shoe. Understand where this is coming from. That's one. So the blame on, hey, um, my children, who will take care of them? Who will do this? Understand that you're further damaging them. And they are going to reap the consequences of that, your action of staying there. That's one. Secondly, tell yourselves the truth. You're not staying for those children. You're staying because you do not have the willpower to go. Mm. And, they love, and you just put it on the children so it will look as if it's, the, it's about you. Ask yourself, how am I living this life? Am I enjoying this life? I might put yourself first for a minute. You cannot love what, uh, love somebody else when you don't love yourself. You cannot give what you do not have. So my mm. staying in this relationship, is it further damaging my children? Or can I live and be sane enough to raise them in the love that they deserve to have? So to, consider that. Let me come to you, honey. I would, I would say that, you see. I would take um, a cue from what BC said. It's, the power is, uh, you know, um, <laughs> in you to 
take your children with you if you want to take your children with you. And I think a lot of a problem, I mean, a lot of, um, one of the issues people have is that, um, especially for women who have not been working, who don't have any money, who, they're thinking, oh, so if I, take, if I take these children with me, uh, how, how, am I going, how am I going to even survive? Now, how are they going to survive? But what they don't know that is that, um, yes, it will be hard. It will be difficult, but you won't die. What if you die in that marriage? Mm. They don't understand that. Yes, and then they stay there because of something. And, I mean, if you're going to make a reference to uh, the late Bimbo's, uh, you know, story, according to what has been said, you know, allegedly online, she wanted something. She wanted to live with and something. Five children. Five children. She wanted to, and she wanted to live with something because... According to the story again, they said that any time she was being beaten or abused, that the, uh, the firstborn was always saying, or one, or one of the occasions was saying that, Daddy, no, please stop beating my mother and all that. Now, look at that. So when I saw that, I felt now that she has died, that she has passed, and the father was annoyed and was saying that, oh, your mother is, you are doing like your mother, you are behaving like your mother, she has taught you this, that, that, that. Who is going to take care of them? Will the father take up all of this? I mean, it is just so sad. Uh, there are many layers to this conversation. <laughs> many layers. layers. The, the another layer is that the, we project positivity out there, like the social media facade, or the Godot, everything is going so well. You yeah. see a couple, then they look, they, look so, they look so happy in the pictures. And they're socialites. And, uh, they're they're yeah. socialites, yeah. and everything looks so cool, good. And I think it's yourself, okay, how, how, do you, how do you reconcile a, a violent man to somebody who looks loving and caring to his family. That's one layer. And that layer is a part of family. How does family help in this kind of situation? If you have a sister, you have a mother, you have an aunt who is being bitten. In fact, we, also, we must also talk about men mm. who are being bitten. Yes, sir, because this one accused yes. the man, wife this, too. This man too said that this woman beat him up. So there, are, there are women who are beating up their husbands, and the men are not mm. even able to talk about it. Because out of the fact that I'm the man of the house, I don't want to come across as weak. So they do a lot to the chest. They, they take in so much. So how <coughs> does family help in this kind of situation? So I had a family once, um, a relative one time that um, <laughs> the wife was pounding him. Mm. <laughs> the wife was very stocky. It's not funny. So any it's... little, no, <laughs> any little, he, he would just collect bass boos, bass boos. His cheek is swollen today, his head, mm. and he kept lying about it. Now, this did not start in the marriage. It started while they were dating. Oh. The whole family begged this Obokuzo, the big head man, oh not to God. marry this woman. <laughs> this woman will be your death. And they mm. said, no, don't worry now. Mm. Uh, people fight mm. now. It's, mm. it's part of it. It's part of it. They got married and they had four children. And every two weeks, because I was at, at some point, I was in secondary school at the time, I was recording the time they come to settle matter. Every two weeks, there will be a very huge fight. The man will carry ice block. You now see this man carry ice block all the time. They'll sit down in the sitting room and they are, you know, talking and talking back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. One of them now, unfortunately, has died. Oh, my gosh. And the children now have been abandoned. Mm. And I sat down one day, I was asking myself, wouldn't it have been better if these two people found, you know, went their separate ways? Would it not have been better that they realized that this is not working? Before they entered this relationship, they were aware that two of them were toxic for each other. But because they were trauma bonded and there was nothing, you know, even family members tried to separate them on a number of times. Some people are actually very stubborn. Hmm. When you're coming, they will say you want to, because you're not happy in your home, you want to scatter us and they don't listen to you. But um, I think human beings, whether a man or a woman, should begin to take ownership of the sort of life that they want to live. Okay. I've realized in science right now, let's talk about how this affects even us as human beings and our bodies, that for every time there's a situation that happens and your body has to revert to either fight, flight, or freeze, your body is releasing toxins that are not good for you, that would work against your health. And if constantly your body is releasing, so once in a while, maybe like a lion comes into this place now and everybody just, your body releases those hormones and you are, you know, scampering. But if your body, imagine if your body has to release those hormones every two, two weeks, every day. Some people are living under intense toxic conditions. Mm -hmm. They walk around eggshells, on eggshells uh, around their husband. They, they are not able to speak up. I had a friend once I revisited, and by the time I went to the house, the husband came back. Eh? She couldn't even gist with us again. 
Me and my husband said, let's be going to our house. Yeah. The, the <laughs> atmosphere changed. Yeah. She was, hey, daddy, I'm not there. Daddy, I'm coming. Daddy. Now, wow. I could do, I, my husband said, let's go. Let's so that go. moment, this toxins visit. have been released. Yes. Well, that's what finally causes cancer. Cancer, all depression, yeah. all those yeah. physical health issues hey, me, that we need me, to look into. Let me go on a break. Because when I come back, I'd like to open our phone lines. I'd like to hear from women or even men who are having difficulties detaching. You, you, you know, you hear this, because this is not the first time we discuss it on your view. Yeah. yeah. We talk about a lot of times. Yes. And we say it over and over. Also, you, you, you know, so different cases evidences. and all that. And the question is, why are you not living? And that we don't even learn from other people's yeah. experiences. experiences. So I really like to hear from these stories, women like these, who have gone through, who are going through this right now. Please call the numbers on your screen. We'll come back after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. As I said, we're going to open our phone lines. Call, call us on 081-270-53687. 091-390-76948. Please tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC to your radio Twitter. I hope this, the numbers will come on the screen so that you can call us. Because there's, a, there's, a, there's an angle I'd like us to take this to. The financial part of which you said yeah. success, you know. Uh, poverty is something they preach against, they talk against. Nobody wants to be poor. Nobody. And if mm. you want to leave that poverty bracket, you don't want to go back there. Mm. You understand that, listen, I'm now in this marriage with success. We've built this thing together. We are, we are in this and we are building and we bought a house, we bought a car. Yes, he's beating me. If I leave, he has more financial muscle. What do I fall back to on? Take, to mm. take a lot of things from me. I will just go back to being a, maybe a teller in the, in, the, in, the, in the bank. Or, you know, you are thinking of all the indices that made you what you are today. You are thinking to yourself, I don't want to go back to that. Should I just manage so that my children can stay in this private school if you go? Because would I now take them away from the private school? Or, you know, there are many things because you're thinking, how, why do women stay? And it's mm -hmm. important that we discuss it and we look at it in real terms. All right. You don't want to go back to where you're coming from. Is the reason I said that, yes, it will be hard. It will be difficult. You will tell yourself, but you will survive. And then I think that that saying that, you know, uh, broke people should not be in a relationship, it should start applying to women. Yeah, I agree. It should start applying to women. Women should get into marriage having something already that you're doing. And I think marriage these days is about partnership. People are thinking of, okay, so when I bring this to the table, you're bringing this to the table. In other climbs, they sign prenups. You cannot say you don't have anything no, and then you're time, signing... No, no, uh, no uh, so, uh, that, so I'm saying that. Now. I'm saying that. So it is something that is already happening now. Mm -hmm. And then let's take it back to oh, relationship and all that. When they start the relationship, a lot of people see the red flags, but they are not just doing anything about it. Okay, we've read a lot of stories. And I'm not even sure that when we're done talking here today that some people will not still die tomorrow because of this right. violence. Because I think that some people have just turned deaf ears to... You know, listening to I people to, and all I'll that. I'll pick on that red flag thing you said. I'll talk about it, but let me take this Loretta's call. Good morning, Loretta. Are you there? Good morning, Loretta. Are you there? Yes. Okay, there's Loretta, I think. From Worry, yeah, you're Loretta. live. Loretta from Worry. I'm a yes, lawyer. you're live. Go uh, ahead. Mario, uh, I've been working for ages. Oh, my God. I, I didn't believe I was going to get through this morning. I just tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. Loretta. Yeah. <laughs> Not better, not no better. You're, you're listening to the TV. Okay. First, go ahead. Okay, sorry, I will know it now. Sorry. Okay, can you hear me? Very clearly. Hello? Please go ahead. Of course. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm feeling, I'm so excited. This is my uh -huh. first time. Welcome to the show. My first. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, let me just go straight. Uh, I'm a lawyer, and we notice that in Nigeria, women think marriage is their identity, is their life. You know, like we're saying. You know, it's not your life, it's not your identity. We think you have life before marriage, like even in the marriage. And then because they're always scared of what they will lose, how can I leave? Or somebody has to come and take over. They'll take over the house, they'll take over the... At the end of the day, we just lost our life and lost everything. I was a product of an abusive marriage. I was abused. I said, one day I'll bring my story to you, Mariah. She said, take my but one day I'll bring my story. Men are terrible. Mm -hmm. We should learn to tell our daughters, be independent. It's, it's married. Oh, my. Oh, Sugar, are you there? Lovetta? Oh, I was so sorry. I really wanted to hear from her. Um, I red was, flag. I was talking about the red flag. Yeah. 
And you see, these red flags are in different ways. We keep talking about red flags, red flags, but you see, sometimes we have to understand, we have to define what's a red flag. So I've always said it here that, you know, my husband, one of his downers is the fact that he, when, he's, when he's upset, he shouts. And I've seen his father shout. I've seen, I've seen family, how they shout. So to somebody, to you, that might be a red flag. Like, ah, me, I don't want to no shout at me. Yeah, my own house. Be able to but me, initially in the, the first year of marriage, any small thing, he's shouting and screaming. I'm thinking, I couldn't understand it. I was like frustrated around home. My mom was going on, you know. And his father called me and said, listen, you need to I shout. That, that's, that's how we are. Listen, after like five minutes, you know. But it took me a long time to, to accept that, okay, this guy will shout and scream, and then after that, after a while, they can explain be again. But, yes, but so for some people, it's a red flag because yeah. they can be verbally they, they'll say that's verbal abuse. So you will give you a yeah. talk, oh, it's yeah. verbal abuse. But in the cultural way, okay, he has shouted in here. So as he did, he stop people, as he stop paying uh, school fees, as he stop paying your rent, he's not providing. You no, know, you weigh your options. Yeah. So that's some right. people will say. Shouting at me, I'm out. This verbal abuse, I'm out of here. No, so the question Others will say, is, I can, I can handle that. If that is down, I'm yeah, fine. I can yeah. handle that. So yes. we have to define what red flag is. Yes. So you define it as an individual because we all have our different love languages and different personalities, different threshold of what mm. we can take. We are all different here. Yeah. So our red flags are definitely going to be different. Now the shouting in question, you would, if. For adventure, you can manage shouting, okay? Some people can, ma I can manage shouting, okay? They sh my husband shouts. Too. I cannot manage shouting. Uh, hold on now. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would be looking for the content of the shouting. Mm. So are you shouting and shouting me down? Are you shouting and disrespecting me? Are you shouting and using words mm. that would make me start feeling depressed and hurt? Uh -huh. That is the content of what I'm looking. If I know you as a, just a very loud person, my husband, when he's arguing, he sh we're arguing, you know, our voices are so high. My kids are like, you guys are just arguing. Our voices are high. But the content, yeah. can I see disrespect uh -huh. in that shouting? Exactly. It's when there is disrespect, you know, that this one don't go past shout. Because mm. even somebody who is calmly speaking to you can be disrespecting Absolutely. you. Actually, I have some people around me who, when they are fighting, you'll be hearing the wife's voice. Hey, I'm like, why is this woman always bullying this man? Till one day I got close. Is the man what the man was saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me, yeah. I would have some assaulted. <laughs> but we saw the shout and felt the woman was, was the abuser. Yeah. Take your call, I'll come Let back. Let me take this to Larry Wadjie. Come mm -hmm. on, Larry Wadjie, you're there mm -hmm. from the UK. You're live. Uh, yeah, hello, Mariah. Good morning. Go ahead, please. How are you, busy hey, and everyone over Good morning. There. Yes, go I ahead. I've got three things to say. Yeah. Um, are you talking about the shouting? You know? All right, let me start from that. Hello? We can go hear ahead, you, sir. sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. The shouting over here, I will tell you, my ex, you know, why, when we go to court, you know what she said? Mm. Verbally abuse. Yes. Yeah. Not even shouting, verbally abuse. And that's an offense over here. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're shouting on your, I'm telling you, it's a big, big offense. Mm. That's number one. Number two, I think Nigerian law, law has to be changed. In the marriage, let the women, let them have their own rights. When the marriage broke up, maybe 40, 50, 30, 50, 30 70, 50, 50, something has to be written by the government. The law has to be there. Because right. there's no law that, that, that covers the women. Right. I'm telling you, that's why all the men in Nigeria are doing all these things. All right, I don't want us to denialize, but thank I, you, Mr. Larry Wajiri. Yeah, then, then. Yes, go ahead. Oh, wow. I think we lost it. Sorry, Let Mr. me quickly Larry. finish this red yeah. flag issue. So, uh, you also will define your red flag or not based on the awareness that you have. There are sometimes you see people being disrespected, but they are not aware enough to understand that this thing is disrespected. Or emotionally them. abused. Mm. And they are not aware, they don't even, they are not in that space. Mm. So that person, when you are saying red flag, he, the person doesn't get it. Yes. And that's why they say a woman must know yourself, know yourself, mm. know what you like, mm. so that what, when what you don't like comes, you can easily see it and say, I really do not like this one and set the boundaries. Because our mother the didn't know. They didn't know the so difference. They didn't know it was abuse. Yes, was like, hey, yes it's normal. Hey, it became shopping. normal to mm. them. So we, we are going to be raising young girls now to know what um, disrespect means. But, but are we not the same people means. saying that they don't, they, they don't have enough, um, that the, the, our young, the young the Gen Z's today, the Gen Z's today mm. 
they don't have enough, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Resilience. Resilience, that's yeah, the not word. Abuse. Uh, well, 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 not for abuse. Not for abuse, but they, 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 they want everything so perfectly done. They don't, don't have blame the them. resilience okay. that we, our parents had. They don't, don't have that. Them. So this thing is still uh, individual, it's still an individual thing because you still people, Gen Z, that <laughs> are being abused too and they're still staying there or something. Exactly. And I tell you what, in the past how many months now, I have ventured on, you know, TV and talking about, you know, domest domestic abuse. And I will say that it even beats me. When I see people who are not married, who are just in relationship and then still talking about the red flag here and things are happening. All right, like the other day, uh, I saw on Instagram, uh, some girl heard that the boyfriend was with a girl in the house and then she could not gain access into the house and then she just went through the window and started breaking things. <laughs> are you serious? I'm like... What? Who raised to these people? This is a relationship. Did you buy those things? You're going to replace those things. You are freaking going to replace those things. Hassan. Are you joking? Good morning, Hassan. Uh, are you there? <laughs> Nonsense. Hello, Hassan. Morning, are you there? You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Murad. Good morning. morning. Please, uh, this is a very sad story yeah. about what happened to the, between mm. the couples. Yeah. Um, please, my advice here is Nigerian women. I know we have very, very good women around. Very, very good women, very compassionate women. But you see, majority of women in Nigeria, they should begin to disassociate themselves from material concerns in marriage. Stop looking at the marriage that let me get some type of it. What is my own inside this marriage? What am I going to gain inside this marriage? Anybody can be rich. A woman can be wonderfully rich. Yeah. A man can be wonderfully rich. You see, the cost of the matter in this issue is poverty. Hmm. You are fighting about you want to get hold of the house and you are fighting over it and you lost your life. Look, let me tell you, marriage is never a do or die of a thing. Hmm. It's open, even yeah. in Islam. There is a room for you to divorce. A woman can get a divorce. A man can divorce his wife. If there's a problem, women abuse men. Men are doing this women. Yeah. Yeah. So please, Both ways. this Thank issue you. of materialism is the issue yeah. in this country. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hassan. Materialism. materialism is one, but it's not all the issue. Let me give you two scenarios. You're a single lady. Yeah. And the fact that you're not in your 20s. Mm -mm. Now, if you meet a man now who ticks all the boxes, and I'm not, I'm not even use you, a woman like you, for example, meets a man in maybe in her mid-30s, or in her late 30s or early 40s, who ticks all the boxes and it's perfect. And she feels that, ah, I should have married Finally. five years ago, 10 years ago. <clears throat> Finally, I have now married. And then you have two, three kids, and seven years down the line, he starts being violent. A lot of women in stay. that shoe, mm. they stay. Mm. But in their head, I waited for 20 years. Mm. I waited for 15 years. Mm. And finally, this one has shown up. Mm. So the man already knows that, ah, I came as a trophy. I'm mm. a trophy for you because you were, you did not have me. So seven years, she's reluctant to go back to singleness. Like, ah, she said, I waited for 20 years. Beg. Let me just manage this beating. That was one. So it's not only about wealth. Number two, and I will come to that. Number two, there's a lady I know. Her first husband disrespected her and um, beat her up. She took the, the leave, the, the, she, she, she listened to people like us or whatever. And, and then she left. And she left. She left. Mm -hmm. Found a way to raise her daughter, which okay. she was doing. Found love again, was I happy that she found love. But this second, clown mm, started beating her, beating her also. <laughs> I the second you clown what? started beating her also. So now, she she's reluctant to leave because in her mind, he's the second husband. You say, ah, maybe I'm the one with the problem. She doesn't want to leave. She, so she's choosing to stay in the abusive marriage because she feels that people will say, because I'm the, the society problem. will so, say. So, so, so I'm saying, these are yeah. the real reasons. So the the options. Yes, so Mariah, the thing is when you have self-love, mm. it's about you. Actually. Who cares what people are saying? You are always looking for validation from people because you don't have enough validation for yourself. Kai. Yeah. Give your validation to yourself. Whoever wants to talk can talk. It's none of your business. As long as you can take care of yourself, you have a good life, you can pay your bills, they will see the happiness in you and mm. they will be murmuring. They will be like, eh? Right. She's even happy. How dare her be happy without a husband? Exactly. <laughs> Seek validation from within. Right. Give yourself that validation and all these things. And also, 
This let me let you okay. know. You're, you're, you're a coach and you continue. Let me come back. Right. <laughs> because I've had discussions yeah. like this with BC, mm -hmm. and you know, we're actually just dishing out advice to people. And I was going to say again that that is an individual thing, it is the way you see yourself. Mm -hmm. So, let me tell you something as a single lady, I have been in relationships, and you know that thing. This one is going to be funny now because you see how you get into this relationship and you're like, you're heaving that side of relief that, oh, I this one has finally come. You will chop breakfast, <laughs> and then you will not get into another one. You will see the person say, wow. wow. And then that person will serve you another breakfast. So me, I am not mm. like mm. that. Mm. And I tell young people, I tell myself as, as I speak to people, because yes. I told you uh, yesterday that I have a YouTube channel where yes. I talk about stuff like this. I tell people, as I'm talking to them, I'm talking to myself. Yeah. I have talked about master dating before. Now listen to me. I said master dating. Okay. And that is about self-love, loving yourself. Absolutely. Do you take yourself out? Yeah. Do you love yourself? It is while you're doing that, when love finds you. They find you if, in that they state. They find you in that state. And then when it finds you in that state, you already know you love yourself. That person sees you and it radiates. Yeah. And that is when you can now, you know, because what you don't even have, you can't give. Absolutely. And I think that this is a fundamental issue for so many people. It does not just start as domestic violence. It is how some people did not get, oh, I love you from the house. And then they meet this guy as a teenager. And this guy says, I, I love, love you. you. And then you lose your head and you don't want to go to school again. You give the person your school fees. You do <laughs> this, you do that. That. Mm. There are so many things I cannot even take. Mm. Let me take this call from Mrs. Zubair. Mrs. Zubair, are you there? Large Zubair. Thanks Thank for calling from Malimo Show. I don't understand. Hello, sir. Are you there? Okay, so I think we lost that call. Yeah. So I love what you said because the reason why we, we have this kind of conversation is, is to let people know that, listen, even though you're single, once you have self-worth, if you are 50 years old and ah. you find out at the age of 55, the man starts to beat you, for your sanity eh? and your for your well-being, and even the eh? sanity of your children. Yes, so you better leave Pull up, and, se and separate Pull yourself. Up. Because the truth is, at the end of the day, mm. you you have to leave. Mm. People die mm. because oh, I don't want them to say that ah, at that fifty she's getting married. Can't you manage it? What is it? It's not just it's not just a marriage. Mm -hmm. Can't you just manage this person? And it's not just one slap. If you come close to me and see the way I take care of myself, you will even know that it's not this body you will beat. <laughs> Every two weeks, I do my ma my masseuse comes to the house and I do my massage. I take care of myself. Like I I meditate, I refresh. I go to an open space. I take I take care of myself. I don't use I'm cuckoo black, so I don't use any cream or anything. But I take care of myself. My well being is priority because I'm in a space where I'm helping other women get a proper health care for themselves, have a healthy self-esteem and confidence. I cannot be effective in that space if I don't have confidence and a healthy self-esteem. Mm. So if you now come and start beating me, when you finish beating me, I will not carry that energy and go and teach other women. They will get the wrong vibrations from me. So mm. once I notice that it's no longer working, and even everybody knows that somebody like BC will carry a bar, mbula bam, mm. I am out of there. And we need to, you know, this societal thing that without a man, no matter the success you have as a woman, is nonsense or is rubbish or you are nobody. We need to stop it. You are a full human being. You are not there to be a better half. You are there to complement. You are a full human being. The man is a full human being. And two of you are together to complement each other. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't work, you can still separate and be a full human being. So yeah. find yourself. Know your identity. Yeah. Hold your own. Mm -hmm. Make your own money. Mm -hmm. See, it's not like I like too much work. I'm working for a reason. Mm -hmm. So that in case of anything, no kogide, I can stand yeah. on my Same own. Thing. Let me take this call from Chizaba. Good morning, Chizaba. Are you there? Good morning. I really want to hear from Nigerians today on this issue because the, phone line. the question, the fundamental question is, is that why are people not living? Yeah. So, hello, Chizaba, are you there? Okay, let me come to you. Um, all right, so another thing, I hope this has not even escaped me, that I wanted to talk about, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, oh she should have written it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then, um, I'll just uh, move on. Um, I was going to talk about, oh uh, gosh. Oh okay, gosh, so, gosh, let me, so let me, let me, let me, yeah. let me go back. So, Today, really, I mean, the show is going to be ending soon, but I think the real crux that we wanted to find out today is why do people still why stay? Why do you keep staying? Because, and it's important for us to weigh all the options, understand, and be able all to right. relate to all the options. He came back. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> all right, so I was going to talk about, you know, the um, lady who called earlier yeah. mentioned something, and, you know, I, we did not actually talk about that. Uh, you know that thing about... Um, 
oh god what's happening today you know you know that uh, yeah you know that thing of, about people saying that okay once i get married people have that mentality so nigerians get married i think nigerians i should use nigerians they get married and they think it's an ambition you know oh <clears throat> finally. finally and so uh you think that you have achieved you have arrived yeah. you have so I, I think they don't know that you are supposed to continue your life Two people have come together, mm. and then you're supposed to complement each other, and then you have a purpose as a human being mm. by yourself. And you should achieve that particular purpose. But yeah. you know that thing of, I now depend on this person, I lean on this person, mm. and it comes in different, different, different Please. forms. And I'll tell you, you'll find, uh, you find a couple, they have just gotten married, and then maybe the husband on a Sunday evening wants to go out and, uh, you know, hang with friends. And then the woman says, I want to follow you. Follow, follow him to where? Yeah. Can't you follow him? Okay, so Why I'm not saying him? that you should not go together. But is it that <laughs> the person cannot have his life again because the person is married? Why do you want to follow him? So the person cannot hang are we with... Best with so, <laughs> so you are can... Best so where, you, where are you going to go meet? So you can have dates. You can have when you visit people. <laughs> but the thing is, that the person wants to hang with his friends. And then every time, you're... you're I want to... Yeah, you cannot, you cannot, because you and I are best friends. <laughs> oh, because you and I are best friends. <laughs> we are best friends So now. I actually believe that. Okay. Yes, we are married. We have what we want we to achieve with the marriage, life. but we have separate life, and then we have purposes, and then we should still follow this thing through. Your life and my life are joined together. It does oh. not come to a halt because my <laughs> life <laughs> and yours are joined okay, together. Take your call. <laughs> Let me take Balogu. Good morning, Balogu. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're alive. Go ahead, please. Yeah, you people, you are doing fine. Thank you, sir. You are doing yes, fine. Sir. Another thing, uh, another problem I want us to look at is uh, the issue of religion here. Our spiritual father, when they say for better, for worse, is another thing uh, our women need to look into. For better, for worse, in a marriage that is not working, even as a man, for better, for worse, in a marriage that is not working, no pastor, no pastor will ask you to walk out of that marriage. Mm. No pastor will ask you to walk out of that marriage. And things are not working well. One is dying. One is not benefiting. They will still ask you to tolerate one another. So what extent and you lose life? Like my sister said, it affects the children. The, that trauma can never be forgotten. We have so many cases. The, the orphanage king that died, the children are there now. What comes after? Thank you very much, because you have brought us to the for better, for worse. Yes, religion. That goes to religion's religion. body. Religion. No matter what, because... And I find a lot of them, I mean, I just got a message that will be linking out. So for those of you on DSTV, on, um, on cable, uh, we're going to be linking out uh, to a program very soon. So you can join us on internet, on social media, on YouTube, and on our TVC app. Um, so going back to what he was saying, religion. Mm. Because many of us have gone through marriage counseling. Yeah. We've gone through where we have um, our, our um, uh, mentors who, who tell you, listen. Do you know I did not do marriage counseling? Yeah, I did do. Three months. You can't, you can't even marry in Redeem without marriage counseling. You have to do. I did not do marriage counseling. In, 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 in Redeem, they will do blood tests for you. Don't you marry. To make sure you don't ever go pregnant. Because I did not do marriage you. counseling. Do you know what I didn't do? Why didn't you? I started counseling marriage people, married people from the age of 16. So I just realized that in my neighborhood, it started from my father. I got to 16, 17. He trusted me enough to tell me some things, and then his wife would report him to me. <laughs> and even when I got to the university, you know, I would have, you know, elderly friends. I had a lot of elderly friends that would call me and say, this is what is going on. What do you think I should do and all that? And I would tell them what I think from my own little experience coming from a very uh, dysfunctional, abusive, and all those homes. And I... I I was able to see things beyond my age mm. at the time. And I would tell them, and it would work. And they kept coming. And that was why initially I was calling myself a, lo a love expert, mm. love relationship mm. expert, because I'd been doing it from my teenage years. And somehow my husband found himself in that position too when we met. So I just felt there was no need to. We just told ourselves, um, we are friends. No matter the issues we have, let us talk about it. Let the sun not set on our issues. Mm. And I know genuinely that we are friends. And he told me, I will never lift my hand to hit you. Shebi, that is your deal breaker. Every other thing, can you manage? You know, so I never really got into 
uh, they now told me, they are called me and advised me. Because one of the reasons, I'm not saying you shouldn't get advice from you know, spiritual mm -hmm. leaders and all that, but you have to also pay attention to where the advice is coming from. We give advice based on our filters. If peradventure I believe that divorce is a terrible sin, and you come to me and tell me you are being beaten, I will tell you, please stay in exactly. that marriage. So, that, 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 that's so we talk from our so filters, and that's why you as a human being, when you go to get that sort of counsel, still ask yourself, how can I take, what do I take? What do I feel about this situation? Can I survive in this situation in a few years' but, time? But see, Use your own guys, brain. I want us to weigh, see. I want us to weigh modernity and traditional way of doing things. You see, they are, they, we, we don't, we, let's not discard the old ways all the way because what we used to, what, what they told us is that, yes, marriage is a, a school. I mean, yeah, you, know, you learn as you go. Yes. Graduate. So, and when they say that, what they're saying is that you see a lot of obstacles. Yeah. You see a lot of things that make you want to run away. Mm. But stay there because many, many women today who are celebrating 40 years, 50 years in marriage, they've, stuff. they've been through this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they, so today they are carrying their gale, shouting, hey, Thanksgiving, we are 80 years in marriage. But if you go through what they went through, you can go through half of it. I know so the question, you. therefore, is that okay. are we, how do we still have modernity and yet keep some traditional ways of resilience? <laughs> I think, mm -hmm. I don't know why. I'll take your, I'll take your yeah. comment after this, this yeah. uh, phone call. Good morning. Hello. Are you there? Hello? Good morning. You're um, live. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, yes, I would like to let you know that I went through it for 37 years. You went through right from the my marriage abuse. Oh, marital abuse. I'm so sorry. sorry. Thirty-seven years. Oh my lord. From the third month of marriage, hmm. I was I started being abused, oh my God. and because I was young, I didn't really understand what it was. I just thought maybe probably the person didn't know how to handle a woman, hmm. so I just stayed on, hmm. and then by the ninth month. I had been threatened with physical abuse. I had to jack her. I jack her. I went abroad. Hmm. And after a few months, it came begging. Mm -hmm. And then he also came to meet me abroad. And we were living together again. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I noticed was that he was drinking heavily. Oh. And whenever he has taken a lot of alcohol, he becomes a different person. So it was most of his character is being induced by the alcoholic drink and probably his background. Maybe he didn't get the kind of training or he doesn't know how to handle a woman. So I went through it, uh, even to the extent of, you know, I had to call police to arrest certain situations, you know, and it Why just did you keep on. going back, ma? Why did you keep going God, back? God bless you. I went back. I went back because I thought maybe it there changed. could be a change. Mm. The, little, the children were young. Mm. I just continued and continued. I came back to Nigeria. When we came back again, it, because he's in Nigeria, he has more power. He just continued to abuse me. Wow. And the, the verbal, the physical abuse was affecting my children. It affected my two children. Hmm. We, we, just, we, we, we were not living. We were very unhappy people. Hmm. And it got to a stage that I said, okay, fine. After family, we say, oh, stay on. The pastor to say, ah, there is your cross. So, you know. Hmm. People have different kinds of crosses. This one is your cross. Anyway, after 37 years, I just said, okay, my children are big and mature now. There's no use staying there anymore. Wow. Let mm. me just 37 let me be years free. to make that decision. Let me try and leave whatever mm. is left mm. of your life. In, of my life. Mm. I am 60 now. Mm. I said, whatever is left, the special grace that God has given me, what is left, I want to leave it in peace, in good health, right. you know, peace and happiness. Thank you well, very much for, for sharing you. your story. That's going to click. We're going to come back. We continue. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. Just a really, we heard a story from our last caller about the fact that she stayed 37 years because she thought the man would change. Mm. You're going to say something. Yes, I was going to say before she even called that, you know, when Bisi was saying that uh, you're going to pick stuff from your filter if you don't believe in divorce, for instance. I don't believe in divorce. I actually, it breaks my heart when I hear that people are divorcing. But when it comes to some certain issues, somebody is beating you, the person is going to kill you, you're being emotionally abused, you don't, you feel less of yourself and all that. I would advise the person to just leave so that you can be sane. Uh, and then she talked about, you know, she she went back to that relationship or that marriage. It's going back. You know, it is one thing that has happened to so many people. And even in the Bimbos case that we used as the, the late Bimbos um, case that we are using as a case study right now, uh, they separated, they went back. Now, I think perhaps people will say, oh, some people change. I think adults don't, like, in some things, they would never change. I'm so sorry, but they would never change. And I think that when people see some deal breakers, they should just know that. Don't tell yourself that, oh, the person will change. If you know that you cannot deal with it, I think you should just always tell yourself the truth and don't go back into it because that is what that woman has said. Now she stayed in that marriage for 37 years. She said she's 60. And I want to really even... If she's still watching, I want to encourage her that her life is just starting. I'm she should not think you, that, baby. oh, like, oh, I'm already 60. No. But see, I know somebody who, in their mind, listen, I have kids, you have children, I will stick around, I will do, I, I won't walk on eggshells, but I'll do everything to just make sure that the home is calm, my kids are grown, and then you can five years, hasta la vista. How maybe? about the kids? Are you not being selfish mm. because when you look at kids in that uh, sort of toxic relationship now we've seen a lot of people they will say so it is a circle the, that cycle actually it goes it, it repeats itself mm -hmm. so what i'm saying here is that when you find people come from like a polygamous family or they come from like a dysfunctional family or something uh, you see that they carry they take something out it is just very few people Perhaps busy, only busy in the whole world that will ah. say that, ah, because I have experienced this, so I don't want it to happen to me. And then she detaches herself. But it is not easy. It is, you think it is normal. All right, so it can happen in different cases. Look at R. Kelly today. See what he's done, and it's landed him in jail. And then when you go back to it, they say, oh, it was abuse. And then he carried it on. So it is what they have been exposed to. You're thinking about yourself, you're thinking about your children. Is this sane? How do we function? So, so I mean, as I said, one of the crux of our conversation is to why do people stay? Yeah. I'd like us to take a few messages on social media for your report. Like, why okay. do people stay? Simon because Rose here yeah. says, my mother was a victim of physical abuse for years, though. For that reason, I know waiting, I no go take, and waiting, I go take. But sure, get your own money and plan, so you no go depend on anybody. Uh, Toby says, people change, we all change, but we change for ourselves, good or bad. We don't change for people. Um, Chichi on Scripted said, I believe in divorce very well. Not believing in divorce is the reason why a lot of people are dead today. Some will soon die too. Mm. Others are living like ghosts. Iruk says, know yourself and your environment. Jojo says, they always pray on you when you are young. Same thing with Bimbo. She was too young to fall in love. 15 mm. years old. Wow. Lord, please help our children. Yes, so that's another Maureen angle. Maureen says, yeah, what, what is important to us as an individual affects our decision? A woman may resist Living abusive marriage, if marriage is one of the one most things important to them, mm. one thing important. Thank you very much, Bisa. I'd like to take on that one for a second, but let me take Mercy's call. Mercy, are you there? You're live. Good morning, Mercy. Okay, I think we're having issues with the phone line. So we talked about that age, mm. because I've always been one to advocate that you have no business, for me personally, have no business getting married before 25, early. 26. That's my own personal yeah. view. And, and I say that because, not because I don't think that a young person shouldn't marry because I feel like many young people are not mature enough. I, I was very deliberate to make sure I lived. I mean, I made sure I lived. And when I say I lived, I've done a few things. That, and then I finally entered married, I'm like, you know what, done, done. Yeah. There's nothing you can, you can, you can, you can bamboozle with anything. There's nothing you want to tell me today. that I've not somewhat tasted or have an idea what it is. So I, 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 I feel that maturity also comes with age. Sometimes you're young, you're 18, you're 19, you feel mature because someone like BC can say, I was mature as a young girl. Yeah, there are a few people that have the maturity early. Yeah. But most people don't. Yeah. And it's important that you have enough maturity. It's, it's, it's the maturity in marriage that helps you to see the situation, assess it. Yeah. Okay, this guy bits, mm -hmm. he shouts, he sees his background, there's Which a tendency for him. These are the kind of things, things I can say to tip him, to trigger, to trigger his anger. Okay, I can find a way. Mm -hmm. To avoid that mm -hmm. for X amount of years, my Mariah, Mariah, wait, 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 let me pause you. Oh, no, no. Let me, there's no time. There's no time. So that's <laughs> time. You can't 
avoid triggering a madman or mm. a madwoman. Mm. It's not possible because the triggers don't come from you. The triggers come from them, what they are dealing with. So they are just looking for uh, another person to express that anger. Mm. So it's not you that is the trigger. Any other person in your situation, it could be a child, it could be a I mother, can it can the anger. trigger that mm. anger. Mm. So that person has something they need to go and deal with. And I've told people, try as much as possible to raise your children well so that they don't become burdens on their partner tomorrow. We are not rehabilitation homes. I did not marry you to come and be training you. <laughs> Get your training the way you don't marry me to train me. I realized very early that, okay, I understand that this man's voice is loud when he's upset and he can shout. And how do I handle this situation? By keeping quiet. So when he's, he's shouting, I keep quiet. And for how many years of our marriage, he has said that has never, I've nev he had never shouted and I shouted back. Because I told myself, I saw a lot. I, I grew up uh, mature before I was ready to mature. It's not like I chose to be matured. But the circumstances you of everything yourself. I was seeing mm -hmm. made me wise very fast. It could have also damaged another child, mm -hmm. that they go a different path. So as a parent, ask yourself, do I want to of environment any of them can pick anyone mm -hmm. and go that way and put yourself first you cannot give love from an empty cup mm. your cup has to be full and overflowing it's the overflow that people will take mm. not from an empty cup or else every other person who is taken from an empty cup becomes a thief and you become you are rendered useless mm. because you have nothing left mm. women should hold themselves Find who you are financially, emotionally, psychologically, and that maturity you talked about before you get into marriage. Let me take this call from Oye. Good morning, Oye. Are you there? I'm done speaking Good morning, today. Morayo. My name is Oye. You're live. Go ahead, please. Calling from Enugu. This is my first time of calling. Welcome to Welcome. the show. <laughs> Thank you, Morayo. I want to contribute to this please. thing. Like this is said, and like every other person, a woman needs to be doing something. When you have something that you're doing, you will not be like being skeptical about living or not living. Murayo, I am a victim of this thing. I used to work. And when I was working, husband, everything was just moving fine, no problem, no issues. Though he, I used to see this uh, domestic violence. But when I stopped working, Murayo, I saw another dimension of it. And this time around, nobody, he, he's not ready to apologize to you because he felt that your feeling depends on him. And Morayo, I don't know, you people are talking about children living, this is saying about children living, there are things that me and my parents are late. I don't even have any empty siblings in Enugu. Okay, even if I have, when I go to the house, I will stay there, and the next thing, they will start saying issues, saying my children are making like this, the other one. Moriah, we don't stay with our good mind. We are just staying so that these kids will grow up. And secondly, let us have something doing. When you have something doing, the decision will be strong. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Thank you, for everybody. Thank you very much for sharing that story. So I had been talking to somebody before, and the person was like, oh, where are the family members of this person when they are going uh, into marriage or when they're already in marriage? And somebody said, just don't leave your family members. Uh, when they have gotten married, do not say that, oh, they have been taken away. Mm -hmm. Be sure that you're checking on them. But I think that is not even enough because I'm going to go back to this story we started from. The family members were not sleeping. They saw yeah. stuff that way. But the person involved was not ready. Mm. You can only force a horse to the river. You can't, you can't force, it force it to it drink, drink water. So, I mean, look at that. So, uh, I think, um, yeah, family members should keep checking on their family members when they have gone away, they have gone, they have, you have what married if, them. If your family member that someone or something. Well, <laughs> because, <laughs> as you said, this is in so many layers. Yeah, so, so many, many layers. We can't even, we can't even like, exhaust yes. it. You have a family member who is beating his wife. Yes. Your and family member is the abuser. trying to reach out to you to uh, help. Oh, you, you want help now? It's like you don't even know how to handle your older, older brother, older, You cannot even talk to him. To. You so, can't. There are so many layers. Let me take this call from Mercy. Mercy, are you there? Yes, please. You're back. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Asiburayo, everybody. You are doing a very good job. Thank, Thank you, you. Hmm. As the BC, I want to come to you because there was a time I sent message to you on your Instagram that this thing, I'm going through a lot of this in my mind. You never replied to me. Then I want to say something now. You know, I use, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in that situation right now. When I, I married, my husband was working, everything is fine. You know, he has to further his education, has his master, MBA, blah, blah, blah. 
Me, I, I'm just there, school starts. He said, no, you cannot go to school. You have to stay and take care of the children. You know, when you, are, when you marry Isoko man, for that matter, you know, because mm. they have culture, they say you are not going anywhere, you are just there, mm. you have to stay inside the house. When your mama marry your papa, what do your mama they do? Mm. Your mama, they stay inside the house, they take care of the children, they cook, they wash clothes. Mm. If family member come, you go wash their clothes, you go cook, they, they go cross leg for parlor, they wash telly. You, you go to cook, they wash their clothes, they do everything. Okay, now, when we say, if you don't grow to a certain level, okay, I want to further my guy. I'm seeing life, I'm seeing things, I want this program, I want to grow myself. Mm -hmm. He said, you have three children, where you won't go to school for? Where you won't go to school? And hey, you don't get people, where don't they teach you bad things for outside? Just like that, what of a situation like this? Mm -hmm. And you want to live, you don't have anything to, nothing to fall to, no certificate, no business, no pain. No pain. Mm -hmm. So Thank you, Mercy. Yes, Thank you, Mercy. BC, I'll take. I'd like you to take that because yeah. that's a real story. It's a real you know, story because it's easy to say be financially stable, yeah. financially stable, but yeah. where you are not even empowered. Yes, a lot of people come to me and ask that question. Uh, one of the things I do is I don't advise people because I've realized, and that's why I decided to be a life coach, which is I will help you reach your own decisions with the questions I will pose to you and you will pay for that services because I learned it and it's not free that's why sometimes I don't respond to some people if you hear my advice here you can take what works and what doesn't work I did not talk to you personally do you understand but if you come to me personally then you will pay for a coaching session and I will help you find your solution so a lot of people say this but then when you start discussing with them you realize that they're not they're not even ready they know what to do because they will give you the answers that they are asking you. They know what to do. But the readiness to take that action, they want you to say, go ahead. So that tomorrow they will say, is this busy told me. that said, I should do this. Mm. That's why I will not advise you. I will coach you. You will pay. You will sign contracts. You will have your own solutions written out there for you. So people should go deep within mm. and ask themselves, what should I, what is my next level? And be willing to take the consequences. So the problem here is they want the uh, action, but they're not willing to take the consequence. So they tell you they are confused. You are not confused. If I engage this lady now, and I say, give me this, 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 should we drop it? Oh yeah, why are you not starting? Eh, what would they say? Well, my family, my society, they are making excuses because we want the action. We want the results of the action. We don't want the consequences. We have to wrap up. Women should tell themselves the truth. Are you ready to have the consequences of your actions. And it's a strong woman who is saying, I don't care, mm. I'm gonna do this, this is the best thing for me, and stand by the consequences. It is hard, yeah. it is difficult, it is. but then you have to do it if you know that if you stay back, you're going to die. Leave to live, mm. leave to, to live. live. Mm. Right, fantastic, I think we can end with well that, done. leave to live. Um, it's, it's never an easy decision, yeah. I can understand that, and I think every woman understands that. But well, sometimes, as Visi said, you know the answers to the you question. Know the answers. It's just for you taking that, that decision to actually leave. To, to leave. leave. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.